Just thank you, you know, both so much for taking the time out to uh, to speak about Mystery Spot. And um, now this is obviously, this is Mel House's sort of very personal passion project. You know, you've both been friends with him for a number of years. And I think you were both involved quite early doors with this project. You know, other than it being, you know, Mel, what was it that inspired you both to to get on board and be a part of it? Um, you know, it's it's really rare uh, to come across as an actor to come across a movie that that gives you um, that gives you a, a, a script that has such depth of character and so many layers and so much um, so much sort of going on underneath the surface. And uh, with the script, when I first read it, um, it it obviously felt very personal. Uh, it felt um, like it had a whole lot of Mel's soul in it. Um, and, and, uh, and then, you know, for my character, it just seemed really meaty. Uh, there, there was a lot that was there and a lot to play with. And, um, and as an actor, when you come across something like that, you know, you, you can't wait to dive in. You can't wait to, uh, to really get to attack it and play around in there. Um, I think that Mel put together a script that was really interesting and had a lot of, um, a, a lot of heart and a lot of layers and a lot of complexity, um, uh, more so than a lot of scripts that I read. And, uh, and so I was really, really excited to, to get to come in and, and play in his sandbox. Yes, um, I, uh, there are complexities certainly in this script. And um, I think when I was reading the script and I saw there was like a four page monologue, I freaked out. <laughs> but it, it reveals so much of of humanity, of humanity. Um, that's how I see this film. Um, it's about how, to me, about how we deal with sorrow and the choices that one can make when dealing with loss, sorrow, sadness. Um, so I was very um, compelled to, to play this role. Um, um, yeah. And I mean, can you can you both sort of um, you know, without too many spoilers, sort of you know, explain who your character is and and where they're at when we when we first meet them in the film? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I have trouble with accents. I'm so um, sorry. Sure. What was that? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. What was the question? And if you could just um, each take a turn and sort of explain who your character is and where they're at when we first meet them. Oh, um, again, I, yeah, it, it's about sorrow. It's about um, someone who is lost, who is beating themselves up, who's someone who feels so guilty uh, regarding um, an accident that happened, that and accidents do happen in life. Um, and um, it's about forgiveness, forgiveness of yourself. So that's what I feel like my character is about. Yeah, um, yeah Nathan <laughs> is a guy with a whole lot going on. Um, his, uh, uh, you know, he's someone that's extremely devoted to family and due to, uh, the circumstances in his life and where we find him in the film, he's, uh, uh, unable to be, uh, to be as close to his family as he wants. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think he's somebody that when we find him, he's, uh, really longing for connection, not just with his family, but with anybody else. And, um, and, and is sort of a, a, a wash in this, uh, this, this pattern that he's found himself in uh, and, and is looking to uh, find a way to break, to, to break out of that pattern in whatever way he can. Um, unfortunately, the uh, uh, world of the mystery spot allows him to do that in very unconventional and often horrific ways. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and, and, and there we have the movie. But yeah, I, th I think that's what we find. <laughs> Uh, poor Nathan at the beginning of this film. I mean, Graeme, you know, you're a regular at Bright Fest, you know, you've been adopted by, you know, the four uncles of horror. Um, but this role is, you know, it's different, I guess, to what the Bright Fest audiences have seen before. You know, you're playing, you know, you're playing a parent. It's a very drama driven role. You know, how was that as an actor sort of like getting to, to dig, to dig into that? And are you excited for what the uh, Bright Fest audience are going to make of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, w when we were filming this movie, I was so thrilled that I was getting to to dive into a role like this. Uh, like you said, it's so different from anything else I've ever done. 
Um, like you said, it is, you know, it's, it's drama driven. Um, uh, it's, it's perhaps more character driven than I think anything else I've ever done. Um, you know, Mystery Spot is a more subtle film uh, than, than a lot of stuff that I've been in that's played at Fright Fest. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm really excited for Fright Fest audiences to get to, um, uh, to, to, to get to experience that side of me and, and uh, that, that side of horror really uh, you know, and I think it's testament to Paul and Alan and Ian and Greg, you know, for uh, for programming stuff like this, uh, which I think is a really um, one, one thing that I love about Fright Fest uh, is is the the range of films that they show um, and and the umbrella that they consider horror to be, and uh, and I think Mystery Spot, you know, squarely falls into that, um, but is. Uh, is is different and is challenging and is really interesting and uh and and i think that audiences are really going to respond to it i mean what i really enjoyed was you know it's got these wonderful intimate quiet performances you know there's these great scenes of dialogue between between both of your characters you know how much i know i think mel mentioned that you guys all sort of stayed out there together while you were filming you know how much time did you did you put into working on that relationship and like you know working to make sure that those scenes just worked as, as well as they do yeah i mean we we lived there you know, the motel that we shot at i mean we we lived there for you know a month however long we were, we were filming and it really is out in the middle of nowhere uh and and we were really staying in the in the rooms that our characters live in the movie, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, and I think that that helped to really foster, you know, like Lisa and I getting to. Um, oh, it says my connection is unstable. I hope I'm still there with you. Um, I I think that really helped to foster Lisa. And uh, getting to know each other a lot more deeply and getting to to spend that time together that normally you don't really get in a film set. Mm -hmm. Have you got anything else? Anything else to add, Lisa? You know, how did you know how did you find that sort of living and working all in the same environment? Um, it's it's very uh, special and a unique opportunity that doesn't come along always to actually be living where you're filming. <laughs> like, then the rooms we're sleeping in is where we're filming. Um, so it, it, it was, it was, uh, it was wonderful. Um, and also just to experience, even as the character, I'm wandering, I have left my home, I am exploring. And I literally was, as Lisa Wilcox, exploring in Hempstead, Texas. I mean, we. I wake up in the morning and there's armadillos, you know, digging around and there's Spanish moss on the trees. There are cows around. It was beautiful. It was remote. It was exactly the setting of the film is what we were actually living in. Um, we all ate together out on the big patio. Um, it was a wonderful, very bonding experience. And it was also an experience of feeling very safe um together and uh, it was wonderful working with Graham um he has a photographic memory so I really hate him for that <laughs> no I'm just really jealous but anyway um but we had a great um you know we had the opportunity to explore together and talk about the role and the situations and what is mystery spot mean to you um it was great it's not like we were up in some high-rise hotel room you know, and this going to set kind of thing. We really had a very visceral um, experience. So it was great. <clears throat> well, and, and there's two, you know, I'll jump on that too, because when you film a movie like in LA, right? And everybody's sort of going home at the end of the night and people, you, there's like a sense often of, okay, you know, when are we going to go home? You know, like, all right, you know, let's let's get out of here. And And when you're filming a movie, it's sort of like going to summer camp. When you're, when you're out <laughs> filming on location, like living on location, you know, yeah. and and yeah, it, it's really uh, it, it's really special, and and I I prefer to make movies that way, um, and uh, and and mystery spot, you know, certainly, I mean, the fact that we were sh shooting at this weird hotel in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> living at a weird hotel in the middle of nowhere, um, 
uh, it just, it helped add to the whole experience. Uh, the whole, whole ambiance. Yeah. The whole ambiance, yeah. It was really, really fun and, and we all had a really good time. And and uh, uh, my, my favorite little anecdote about the town that we were staying in is that there's basically nothing there. I mean, you, there's like a Walmart, I think, and maybe a, and like a really big gas station, uh, but you go a little bit further uh, and there's an ice cream factory. And that is very dangerous on your days off. <laughs> What was the name of the ice cream? Oh gosh, Blue what Bell. was the name of it? It was Bluebell. Yes, Bluebell, the Bluebell Ice Cream Factory. That was pretty fun. I did visit. <laughs> it was great. I mean, um, Lisa, you're obviously best known for having been a part of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. When you joined it, um, you know, it was already this big, you know, this big series, this big institution. But did you, even then, did you think that all these years later that people would still be talking about it and getting excited? I mean, I think Mel mentioned like he brought on his chef who was like a mega fan of yours. You know, you, you know, are you still surprised at, you know, how, how much people have taken these films into, into their hearts? Oh, Kat, yes, absolutely. I'm completely blown away by it. Um, the, the impact, I mean, I was, I've always been a a horror fan since I was little. And um, and of course, New Nightmare on Elm Street. And um, when I finally got the opportunity to audition and become part of the series, it was, you know, beyond my wildest dreams. Um, to think that over 30 years later, that the impact of um, A Nightmare on Elm Street continues on. Um, I literally just got back less than 48 hours ago. 19 hours of travel, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and that was from Pittsburgh, okay? Anyway, worked all day, you know, signed autographs, et cetera. Travel, 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 19 hours. So I watched it. I'm still a bit jet lagged. Anyway, um, is to see generations now that come to my table. There's the little ones, and then there's mom, and then there's grandma. And grandma introduced the whole everything to the family. And it's something that people really do bond over and, and whatnot. And, you know, when you look at 80s horror, for instance, it's not like Nightmare on Elm Street is not bloody. It's not bloody. It's more about wit and clever kills. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, yes, I'm very happy to be part of the franchise and um, love my love my role that I play in Alice Johnson. So, which has inspired many men and women many women because I never get killed by the bully Freddy Krueger. <laughs> and I mean Graham you know you've worked you know you've worked with Lisa now you know you've also worked with Barbara Crampton you know what is it like you know working with these people that you know, you know you're a fellow horror nerd you know that you, you sort of grown up watching. I mean are you kidding me it's amazing uh I you know it's like every opportunity I get I'm, I'm like pinching myself and and uh you know when Mel told me that Lisa was going to be in the film I was so stoked I mean you know, you, you, beyond just being fans of, of someone like that, you know, and, and, and knowing her work and admiring her work, um, you, 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 it's, it's beyond just like, oh, I love Nightmare on Elm Street. It's, it's about, oh, I, I, I really love their work. They're a fantastic actor. I, I, I know what they're doing. I know what they're, you know, able to do. And now I get to go and play with them. Now I get to, uh, you know, I have somebody like that that's going to be, uh, uh, that I'm going to be, you know, bouncing off of. And, and it's such a gift as an actor, you know, and especially in a movie like Mystery Spot where, I mean, it's me and her, you know, like we're, I mean, there's obviously, it's a, it's a full ensemble and we're, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and it's very actor heavy in, in, in terms of, you know, that aspect of it. You know, Lisa and I, um, you know, obviously have a very deep connection in the film. And so I think that that pairing of, of who you're going to be acting with is immensely important. Um, and when I found out it was going to be Lisa, you know, who I know what she's capable of and I know, you know, her work already. Um, I, I just went, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be great. This is going to be perfect. And, and uh, we're going to knock this out of the park. And, and, and I really think we did. I, I, I feel like um, the two of us meshed really well and we pair well. Um, you know, and, and we're both, I don't know, we're, we're, we're both actors, actors. Like, I feel like we, we uh, <laughs> we're, you know, we're, we're like willing to sit down and run, you know, run the lines and explore the material and really try to understand. And support each other. It's and like, there was no competition going on. It was like, 
I would ask Graham for help. He would help, you know, like it was this whole mingling of, um, you know, we're in this together and how to make this film and make our characters as expressive and as deep and as appropriate as possible for the audience to get our message. So, and yeah, Graham was just one wonderful to work with. Absolutely wonderful. So anyway, and thank you, Graham, for like, enjoying my work. Thank you, but of course. You, you, were, you were wonderful. Well, thanks for all the great work. <laughs> <laughs> here we're we're both like patting ourselves on the shelf, but <laughs> anyway mm -hmm. but um but it's a you know it's intense material it's intense material so yeah and i mean you know fright fest fright fest attendees are at the moment working out what they're going to watch you know when they're going to go for food and whatever but what are they going to get by you know taking a taking a plump with um taking a pick with mystery spot that they might not get from some of the other things that are on offer um, Mystery Spot is just a really unique film. Uh, it's, it's very personal. Uh, it's very, uh, I think it's different from, from a lot of what you see currently happening with horror, uh, in, in a good, and of course I love what's currently happening with horror, you know, but Mystery Spot, it's its own little flavor. Um, I think that, uh, I think you're going to get some really fantastic acting. I think you're going to see some really awesome performances. I think that you're uh, going to uh, get get some uh, some really cool regional horror. You know, you're you're going to feel like you're living in the backwoods of Texas, uh, and uh, <laughs> um, and and we all know what kind of horrific things can happen there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's just it's un it's it's unique. It's different, um, and it's. Uh, uh, I, I, I think that people won't be disappointed if they choose to uh, take a drive out to the mystery spot on Monday night. Um, I, 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 to me, mystery spot is just, it's an intimate film. It's, a, it's, it's not a slasher film. It's not, it has subtleties and it's very um, personal. It's very intimate. Um, I think it's something where you just will take a breath here and there after a scene um, and probably have some self-reflection. Um, so that's what I have to say. <laughs> cool. And I mean, obviously the pandemic has sort of put a stop to, to a lot of things, but have you guys started working on you know, future projects? Oh yes, oh yes. I already um, filmed um, in the mountains here in California, um, a movie called Seasons. And um, it's quite a fun um, trilogy. It's a every season. So we have what spring, summer, fall, you know, winter. I, I do the Christmas season. The winter season is my episode. Um, and it's a horror, fun horror film of uh, each for each season. And um, then I'm leaving shortly to film The House That Eats Flesh. I play the role of mother. Um, what's really fun as I've, you know, as I'm getting older and whatnot, and I'm obviously not an ingenue anymore, um, I'm getting roles that are really fun and needy and evil. So um, having a lot of fun with that. And then I'm also doing um, Reunion from Hell, the second one. The first one had some success, so I'm going to be in uh, this the uh, their their second one. So I have a Lifetime movie that's coming out. I work with um, um, anyway. Uh, I actually did that during just before COVID, uh, and it's called um, Killer Escort. And I run an escort agency, and one of my boys is being very very naughty. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, all kinds of things are exploding. And of course, last year it was like seven films, conventions, nothing. But it's all come back this year like an avalanche. So very grateful. And um, I hope everyone stays safe out there. Um, I've already done about 50,000 miles this year. Um, I've been vaccinated, I'm COVID free. So just wash your hands, be safe, thanks. Um, yeah, and, and I uh, I filmed a movie earlier this year uh, with the amazing Jeremy Gardner uh, and Taylor Zodke um, uh, called The Leech, and uh, that's in post right now. 
Um, I've seen it. It's amazing. Uh, it's wild and totally crazy. And uh, I, I know it will, um, I, I know that people are really going to love it. And then I've got two films that are coming up that I'm filming uh, at the end of this month and then in September. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited to be back to work. And right, right. <laughs> you, you know, it just, it sort of felt for a little while like it would never happen. Uh, and yet, you know, here we are uh, and we're working again. And, and uh, I think the industry is picking back up. And I think that, um, uh, you know, I, I hope that, that the world uh, is able to continue on this path of slowly getting better. Um, and, and, you know, my, my big, big hope, you know, and, and my, my, all my thoughts go out to everybody at Fright Fest. I wish that I could be there so much. Um, and I hope that everybody has a great time, that everybody stays safe. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see, Kat, that you're healthy. I'm glad to see that, you know, so many of the Fright Fest family is healthy. Um, and uh, and that's, that's all I want. I want us to just get back to a place where we can not have to worry about getting in a room together and watching movie or watching horror movies again, because that's what we're going <laughs> to do. Yes. And thank you for letting me be the first time part of the Fright Fest Festival. <laughs> You're part of the family now, Lisa. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once you're in, you can't you can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true.